Hi, my name is Lynn and I am a Pilates teacher, a dance teacher, a movement therapist and a level four pulmonary exercise instructor. And with my pulmonary exercise instructor's hat on, um, I recognize that in these times um, when so many people are shielding, especially people with lung disease, um, they are not possibly having access to the kind of movement and exercise that they would normally have in their lives. Breath, for me, is the foundation of our well-being, our physical well-being, mental well-being. It, it really is the root of so much. So this session is absolutely um, relevant to any person. Um, I'm going to just start with a little bit of a, a factual warm-up. So I just want you to sit comfortably in a chair um, with your feet underneath your knees and your legs nice and parallel with your hip bones. Let your bottom become nice and heavy in the chair and I want you to just visualize your lungs, two big balloons sitting in your chest. They stretch from just under the collarbone all the way down to sit on the diaphragm at the base of the ribs. And when you think of how big they are, I want you to inflate them as you slowly breathe in and breathe out. I want you to do it with your own tempo. You may have different lung capacity to me. And when you're inhaling, thinking of filling that balloon, both of them, both forwards, sideways, backwards, and relaxing, letting them deflate. Notice if your tendency is to have it push upwards. And then try to steer clear of that. Try to see if you can get a little bit more downward motion with your breathing. Let it push back and sideways and into your belly. And when you breathe out from the bottom of your belly, let those ribs soften. Again, breathing in, down into the bottom of the belly. And out from the bottom of the belly. Relax the throat. Let it come out of your mouth. We're going to add a shoulder slide. So we're going to slide those shoulders up as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, let them slide back down. So if you can visualize that lung sitting on the diaphragm, as the diaphragm contracts downwards, it's pulling the lung down on the shoulder, pulling the lung up. And then as we release it, everything is like concertina, just squishing back. That diaphragm is a big disc-like muscle in the base of those ribs that as you breathe in is contracting, sucking the air in, pushing outwards and down, and breathing out, it relaxes up underneath those ribs. Again, breathing in, let that diaphragm press out and down. It's going to be pushing the organs down and breathe out. So what's going to stop the organs from falling out at the bottom? Your pelvic floor. So as you breathe in, yeah, you can feel that breath right into your bum. And then just feel that pelvic floor like a trampoline. Just gently draw it up as though you need to go to the bathroom. Letting those ribs soften down with the diaphragm. Inhale. Everything's kind of stretching with that intra-abdominal pressure and letting it come back down. I'm going to take those shoulders forward and up. And around the back and down. And you don't have to force it. It's whatever range of motion you have freely available to you without strain, without pain. Just moving effortlessly with whatever you have and breathing. We're going to incline the head to the side and we're going to place the hand on the, el on the shoulder. And we're going to inhale as we take the elbow up, just as far as you can go. And breathe out as you bring it back down. That lifting elbow is going to gently draw on the latissimus dorsi muscle that attaches to your tailbone, from your arm to your tailbone, and then come back down. So it's really stretching into your back as well. 
as you breathe in and that diaphragm is opening out those ribs are fanning and exhale bringing it back down you're going to take the arm in a circle inhale circling the arm forward and up and exhale as you go around the back and down and you might say mine doesn't look anything like yours and that's just fine because it's relevant to you and you are just working with your body's range of motion can we do that going backwards just taking a breath in and inviting all this chest expansion and exhale feel the shoulder blade as it kind of slides over the ribs at the back notice if it's sticky and just try and encourage it to feel like it's going to flow a little freer and then come back up take a moment just turning the head from side to side because that was quite a big stretch and then we'll come reset for the other side so ear to the side and we're going to go with that hand to the shoulder and we're going to go up breathing in and breathing out so from the waist down, or I should say from the hips down, I've still got this heavy bum in the ground. My center of gravity is just below my belly button, between my belly button and my pubic bone. And as I breathe in, I'm conscious that I've got a gentle downward into the chair force with my bum, upward into the air, energy with that elbow. And then I'm gonna take my arm in a circle. Don't force it, just breathe. Feel what there is to feel, what is opening. If it's very noisy, if you've got a lot of crunching or clunking, it's okay so long as it doesn't hurt. Try back off from it a little bit. See if you can if you can find a quieter place. Shall we go backwards? Breathing in. And out, letting the shoulder blade move on the back of those ribs and breathing in. So a lot of this that I am doing now is from the Franklin method. Bringing it back up. Good. I'm going to let those arms just come down and I'm going to inhale, lift them out the side. And exhale, lower it back down. And as I breathe in, let the widening rib cage at the base, that diaphragm pushing out, almost feel like that's where my arms are lifting from. That there is this opening from here and everything is energetically expanding. One more time. Inhale, reaching out. And exhale, bringing it back. Beautiful. So that was just a little, a little starter taster session to get things starting to flow and move again. I want to do another two minutes with a little bit of tapping. So I want you to come up the right side of your tummy across and down the left side and up the right across and down the left and we're going to use a little tap you could use a very loose knuckle but it depends on what you feel is a nice vibration for you and then we're going to come up into the chest and we're just going to have a little tapping however you wish to do remember it comes right up under that collarbone that lung tissue Breathing. That's it. And then I'm going to have you just bring your hands behind your neck, if you can, if you have that range of motion in the elbows. But we're going to lace the hands behind your neck, heels of the hands on either side, and we're just going to squeeze, sponging the neck with the heels of your hands with as much pressure as you feel is appropriate for you. Just gently sponging the neck, breathing. We can try different angulations of the head while sponging. And don't stop breathing, of course. Never stop breathing. And then stop. I'm going to take the left hand away my fingers are sticking out and I'll look to that left side and rake my neck. I'm gonna gently make little hooks with my fingers and turn my head back to the center. The result is my fingers will rake that side of my neck. Turn in the direction of the fingers 
and then rake it back. One more time. Again, the pressure is absolutely your call, what is appropriate for you. Should we do the other side? Yeah, turn the head in the direction of the fingers, hook them in, and just turn the head back. And again. And one more time. Lovely. And bring it down. So this last little exercise, sit to stand, is for those of you that have been sitting too much. The last thing you want to do when you want to get up out of your couch is put your hand behind you to push because look what it's doing to the shoulder, whichever side, mm, it's horrible. So feet underneath those knees, the word is help. Hands, eyes, lean, push. We're gonna go hands on your thighs, eyes forward, don't look down. It'll, it'll really surprise you how many of you will struggle with the eyes part of this. Eyes forward, lean, and then push with those hands to stand up. And then we can gently reverse ourselves coming back down onto the chair. Now, if you don't, if this is really hard for you, I would suggest using a firm chair and stack it up. Stack up something to make it a little bit higher or maybe a bar chair so that you're not sitting quite so deep in the hip flexors as you need to build strength in those legs. Hands, eyes, lean, push, and sit back down. Now notice your knees. Hands, eyes, lean, push. If your knees are rolling inward as you stand up, if they're doing that and they're supporting each other, that's got to stop because that's going to really create kind of tension coming around the sides. And if they're falling outward, we still need to work on those ankles. We need to work on the strength of the ankles. So notice what was happening and then come back to just do some heel raises. All I'm doing is lifting my heels up and down, resting on the balls of my feet as I come up. I'm sorry, it's not on the screen. Spreading those toes, ankles going up and down and just feel how do I work them that these knees stay in good alignment, like two little rivers running next to each other. And then let's see if that awareness has helped us to stay hands, eyes, lean, push a little bit more aligned. And coming back down. Maybe one more. And if this one, if this little exercise was too much for today, then I hope you've left it for another day. And slowly but surely we can build up the strength. Um, I thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you.